Now we will investigate Charles law, another law as it concerns gases. Uh, once again, we will look at the four variables, pressure, volume, temperature, and number of moles. And just like with Boyle's law, we will only take two of those variables and the other two variables will be kept constant. They will be held at a value that is not allowed to change. In this case, in Charles law, we will be looking at pressure, uh, we'll be looking at volume and temperature. So what must be kept constant? The other two variables, which are pressure and number of moles. As long as we do not change, allow the pressure to change or allow the gas to enter or escape, we have a system that is governed by the Charles law. And in this case, the relationship between volume and temperature is a direct relationship. Direct means if volume goes up, temperature must also go up. Or if volume goes down, temperature must also go down. Similarly, we can say that if temperature goes up, volume must go up. Or if temperature comes down, volume must come down. But be careful, the temperature must be expressed in absolute uh, temperature, which is the Kelvin scale. Now we express this through an equation, Charles law as V over T equals KC. K is the constant and C stands for the fact that it's Charles law based constant, whatever that value is. Here is an expression, here is a uh, rather a, an example of how that uh, law works. We can similar to the Boyle's law, write it as VI over TI, which is initial volume over final temperature. I mean initial volume over initial temperature equals final volume over final temperature. So we have a temperature of 273 Kelvin and the pressure we are applying is one atmosphere. As a matter of fact, we are only applying one atmosphere in all three cases. We are making sure that we don't force the piston down or we don't allow the pressure to go down uh, or increase. So what happens as you hit each of the containers? When you hit the container, the last one has the highest temperature. The gas molecules start to move out and now the volume goes up to four liters. Now if you divide the volume, uh, new volume, four liters over the uh, temperature, 1092 Kelvin, we get a value of 3.66 times 10 to the negative three liter inverse Kelvin, K negative one. And here the temperature has gone up to 546 Kelvin and the volume is up to two liters. And when you divide two liters by 546 Kelvin, we get a value of 3.66 times 10 to the negative three liter Kelvin atmosphere. As a matter of fact, in each of the three cases, you will see the value is the same as you would expect. As you would expect. This is the Kc, the constant as it relates to Charles law. V over T remains the same. And when volume goes up, temperature goes up in a way such that the constant is generated. We use this form of the equation to solve for any problems concerning Charles law. So here is a problem, a gas occupies 10.0 liters at 273 Kelvin. If I double the temperature to 546 Kelvin, it would cause the volume to become what? So we write the equation and we are trying to find the new volume. How would you isolate Vf on one side? This looks like a more difficult challenge than isolating the Vf or the PF in the case of Boyle's law. Well, you can cross multiply. If you cross multiply, you will have VI times TF equals TI times VF. And then you would divide both sides of the equation by TI. And you will get VI times TF over TI equals VF. And then we solve for VF by plugging in the values and solve the equation after plugging in the values for the right number of sig figs and we get 20.0 liter. Since we double the temperature, we will also end up doubling our volume. And we could have figured that out intuitively, but we here solved it mathematically.